बोलो राजा राम चंद्र की भगवान कृष्ण
Representing the Arasamaj as such. But I give a more broader view. Sister Devi has asked me to speak on Peter Baksh. So this evening, I'm not yet to conduct anybody here. Let me begin by saying there are different ways to look at life different schools of thought and I will begin by saying that the human body is what we call a small universe the universe outside here where it's full of everything this human body has all those things so it is called a macrocosm and the human body is called microcosm. Everything exists outside here, it exists inside here. Now, if I were to stop speaking now, I would have made my point. So let me suppose, think that this human body is a small universe. I hope all pray. Om Vishwani Deva Sabitar Duritani Parasubaha 
Yes, devotees. So now the scriptures they relate to both the body and the mind. So we fight over scriptures, you know, which scripture better and religion better and so on. But actually, they all represent or is the scripture, the philosophy in the scripture relates to the universe as well as, as well as to our own self. When we understand that, there will be less fighting, less conflict in religion. So there are other, other viewpoints about Pitra Paksh as well. What is Pitra Paksh? Pitra we say is ancestors, father, those who take care of you as heads and practice a fortnight. So it is it is said that when the sun, according to Brahma Quran, or both of those Quran as well, that when the sun comes into Virgo, for that 15 days, the the pitras leave where they are and they come to earth and they stay on earth until the sun goes through Scorpio so for that period of time but essentially or especially in 15 days first 15 days that the sun passes through that Virgo so of course you know Virgo the Hindu the teachings of astrology is slightly different from the western world the Hindu teaching is a fixed zodiac and the Western world is a moving zodiac. Mm -hmm. In the France is about 23 degrees now. I will not be too long, so I want to this point. It is said in Mangha Nakshatra, those of you know about astrology, all about the Nakshatras, that is the best time to do offering, make offering to the pictures. But the Arya Samaj, the Vedic system, is a slightly bit different. It speaks about the five daily ajnas. Brahmyaj, Deviyaj, Pitrayaj, Bhutiyaj, and Atitiyaj. Brahmyaj is by service to Almighty God. He exists everywhere, in the washroom, in the world, you know, wherever you are, you think about that God. Devi Ajna is to the Devas, you know, the sun, the moon. Hmm? Deva means giver. All those who give as enlightened beings. Atiti is called guest. Those even come to your home and invited. Bhuta is like not only jambi and spirit as we normally call them, but very people refer to them as Dhamani Maras. As a matter of fact, Dumb animals are related to the spiritual world. Very directly. Some of you have the experience that sometimes you are sick and you really love some animals, the animal will die for you and take away your sickness. So it is directly related. It is boot and then picture. The pictures. In the daily hawan that we do, we offer a mantra to the pictures. So in the Vedic system, every day offering is made to the pictures. There's no 50 days put aside now for the picture box. We believe that serve the parents while they are alive. Do all you can for them while they are alive, not after they pass away. Now I wish or also mention that the Bible says a man is judged by the law he follows. 
So, for instance, if you believe in a certain system and you follow that system, you will be judged according to that system. And I'll bring it on a little further to say that, for instance, if this person alive thinks that after they die, they will come up for food and drinks and all these things, they will come back. And if they don't think that, if they think that's the anti the funeral right, that's the end of it, then they will not come back. But why so? Different cultures, different philosophy, different practices. In the Vedic system, we purify ourselves daily. So at the time of death, we do not go anywhere. So there is no need now. There is no greed, there is no need. So when we die, we accept that and we go on to another life. We don't cling on to the family anymore. We are free. Now that's a long distance for some people. Because I was so much of us are so attached to family and money and all these things. You know? It's so difficult. But not impossible. Not impossible. Not impossible. Keep trying, trying, trying. Any very how we do, we say. Idan namama, idan namama. This is not for me. So, in Puranic culture, another way we say, par upakar. You know, selfless service to others, right? In other words, you pray to the deva. Krishna says, Lord Krishna says, in the soul of man, we pray to the devas. We give to the devas, and they give back in return. That is like a bata or tree. But in this system. He done the mama, there is no bata and chain. We are given selflessly. And you know why? Look at the difference. If I give you five dollars and I demand five, a pound of something, that matter is closed. But should I give you something without asking for something? After a while, whatever I give to you could be worth so many more times. Hmm? For instance, if I fix a car type, Probably a tire uh, problem in the road one day, and I pass and I just help you fix the tire. I put five dollars, ten dollars. I didn't ask anything, but one day I might have a serious problem. Might cost two or three thousand dollars, hmm? and you will feel so easy to put your put in your pocket and say, "Look, take a thousand dollars." That's the difference. So you give selflessly, give God, put in the bank, and don't ask anything. When you have problems, he doesn't give back to you. More than you can give. So the word is. It is said, even in the Quran, that the Brahmin, he is purified in 10 days. Chakri in 12, the Vaisha in 15, and Shudra in 1 month. The different scriptures say different things. But why Brahmin in 10 days? Not, in, not the Brahmin in the sense that what we call a certain name, title, as in Srinidhar. No, not that. Brahman doesn't mean that. The Christians is a Brahmin. The Muslims is a Brahmin. The Hindu is a Brahmin. Who mind is always on God. Janmana Jayate Shudraha. So, you always hear that quotation. Sanskar Rachate Vichaha. Vera Pata Bhava Vipraha and Brahmani Janati Brahmana. So when we are born, we are born as Shudras, we don't do anything. And when we take a Janayu or Sanskar, the Bible says, Mani must be born again. Not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Mean the same thing. Adva Vija means, Dva means to, Vija means birth. Born again. And now we are born of the spirit. So is there no family and uncle and Ajahn, so on, so Fully now, everybody becomes family now. Spiritual family. See? Then, we take a Jani. So, Sanskar, we baptize, we see the Krishna, the family. And that makes us a spiritual person. When we become a spiritual person, one way of spirituality, we study the scriptures. Veda Pata, we follow the path of the Vedas, read the Vedas or Bible or whatever religion you belong to. 
And when you study the scriptures, you know, when you study the scriptures you now as a spiritual person, not a physical person. And after studying the scriptures and changing our life from a physical to a spiritual person, then we come born with Brahman. How? We become absorbed in that understanding of reality and truth. Who really are that divine life, that divine being, that peaceful being. So that is understanding. So a Christian and Muslim, anybody can fall in that category of Brahman. What we call Brahmins or Chilean. Or Brahman so. In ten days. The Vedic people, they do Havan. Now another thing. When a person dies, they don't shave head. They shave head long, long before that. As a sanskar. Hmm? Long, long before that. So, as a little child, young boy. So the shaving of the hair symbolizes detachment, you know, or freedom from the ancestral lineage. But some people cannot get away from it. So people are like Choti. Let's say the family, I want to give the family totally. This, I just remember them a little bit, you know. So people are like Choti. Because we know spirit resides in here. Hmm? Yes. So that here you born with, you shave it off. And you start a new life now. A spiritual life, not dominated by your ancestors anymore. And even though the ancestors will be Rahu and Ketu, those who are astrology, Rahu I think is your mother, mother family, and your father, father family, and Ketu is your mother, father family, and your father, mother family. So they are linked all together. So in 10 days, they do Havan, and that is the end of the matter. Quranic people believe. A certain rights after that is their system, you know, and it works for them because that is their belief. Devotees, I don't much time again. Should I go on this? Okay. Not, another thing I want to speak of is the chakras. The navel chakra, which is called Manipura, there are seven chakras in the body. The navel chakra is called Manipura. The beach mantra for that is Ram. So the name Ram came from the navel. Om Ram Ramaya Namaha. Ram, Ram came from the solar dynasty. This area in English is called the solar plexus. Solar, same sun. So it came from this energy. And this is dynamism, rulership, kingship, glory. Hmm? So this is the center of the material world creation. Because here lies the ether element. Hmm? The heart is the air element. The navel is the fire element. By the private organ is the water element. And we said the spine is the earth element. So the center element, the fire, is in the navel. So hence the sun is the center of the planetary system. It comes from the run of the universe. But these two chapters underneath are called animal chapters. Hmm? The tree here is called human chapters. And these two on top here now is called the divine or spiritual chapters. So think now, we have five below, and we put one, two on top now. Where is the center chakra now? Anybody? At the heart. Not true? Yes. So where does God reside? Where does God reside? In the heart. So the mantra Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Rama is in neighbor and Krishna in the heart. Why Krishna in the heart now? Ram is physical glory. Krishna is emotion, feelings. It will more on that, but for the timing, I'll look at that. So, the chakra here, the beach mantra part is yam. The heart mantra, yam. The heart chakra, yam. We say yam, yama, lot of death. Not true? But yama is called lot of justice, not lot of death, first of all. Hmm? 
Yama, Yama in your heart means it is your conscience that's going to judge you. You cannot hide from your conscience. You could hide in the bathroom, go to see where you want to go. You cannot hide from your conscience. So in this conscience, which inside his heart here, which is Yama, Lord of Justice, Lord of Justice. When Krishna resides, we pray to Aryama Pitra hmm? at Pritpaksh time and we ask Aryama Pitra, Krishna. Because mankind as we know, if you follow Puran, Brahma created Sanak, Sanak Kumar and some sons, you know, and they didn't marry at all. They became yogis. But this other creation, they got married and had children. And this creation is different from the yogi system. I will just make a point, I will make a point for the time. Brahma Quran says, Giving of one thousand cows and being a vegetarian are equal. Let me say it again. Being a vegetarian and even a dawn of a thousand cows are equal. See? So the Lord is Yama, Lord of Justice. He judges you. So Peter Paksh, we see this the sun living on the northern side is called Uttarayan. When he lives on the southern side, it's called Dakshinai or Pitrayan. So this is the divine path and this is the material path. This is the male side and this is the female side. Lord Krishna says to Gita. He says when he died in Uttarayan, when he is standing in Naran Kaos, you know, in a bright fortnight, thinking about me, chanting, oh, you come to me. When they are on this side, this is the Avagavan side. Both and death, come and go, come and go. See, Hindus have a lot of science in it, no? Religion. So, devotees, I know time is a bit short, but it is important to understand that the pictures are on this side, the southern side. That is why we offer the southern side. Is a part of going and coming. So Krishna says to close, to close now. He worship the ancestors or the males go to them. Who worship the devas go to them, and who worship me come to me. I said to clear my nerve. I know time is a bit short, so I'll cut short my. Let's go to the Thank you very much, and namaste. Thank you, Mr. Jee. Now, this stops so suddenly, but um, we do appreciate the words uh, that you give us. Uh, also, we have uh, Pandadev who just came in from Win 101.1 FM, and we must say a special thanks to Pandadev for hosting Sister Devi and I ever so often. You know, Pandadev and I keep in touch via WhatsApp or Facebook, and I will just tell him, you know, Pandadev, I mean, we need to come in. We, need, we have a special message. You know, and he will say, yeah, sure, no problem. Set the date and time, and you guys come on. So, we are very happy to have him here, quite an eligible pundit, just like uh, Pandit Jagannan. And um, the first time I experienced uh, Vedic prayers was at the Diwali Nagar site under Pandit Jagannan. And it was a hundred people doing uh, Hawan uh, for sun worship uh, to the sun god. That was absolutely amazing. And that, that was my first experience with Pandit Jagannan. You know, so these are uh, two pundits I really look up to and great memories. And I welcome to the mic. And that the Abraham Passat from Shabanas. Anji. Thank you very much for that. Sitaram, everyone. As I would say, Sitaram, Namaste, Namaskar, Assalamu Alaikum, Sairam, Jai Guru Dutta, Bandhagi Sahib, pleasant good night. <laughs> Let's say good morning. So, my dear bhaktas, devotees of God, uh, with all protocol observed, uh, all protocol observed.
to members of the Red Child Foundation, particularly to Sister Davy, Brother Anil, and all the wonderful, hardworking members of the Foundation, to Panajay Panajarunanan, and to all you distinguished devotees of God. It's a pleasure to be in your company, and I'm glad to be here. So glad to see you all, of course, uh, taking the time to be here this evening. This itself is a testimony. I'm glad that we responded to the call. I'm glad that we took some time, that we can come and spend this wonderful evening. It's all about celebration. It's all about the information as well, too. So much I know is uh, yet to uh, come out in tonight's session. Um, devotees, I would just like to, you know, uh, fully just uh, encourage everyone. Well, I know it's we just have only tomorrow and Monday, but there's so much myths, there's so much superstitious beliefs, and yet at the same time there's so much fear and uh, ignorance surrounding Pitra Paksh. I didn't get to hear Panaji fully, so I forgive me as I came in. I don't know if I, I don't want to be repetitive, but I know we know the basics, the simple thing, of course, Pitri being ancestors, Paksh meaning the fortnight, this special time set aside in our calendar for us to remember our loved one. This is a time for us to make our offerings to help to benefit those souls. I have been saying it day after day, year after year, always encouraging my devotees, encouraging my people, that let us really observe this time. Devotees, the Deotas themselves, they take this time to worship their ancestors. They are what we call the Devya Pitras, the divine souls, the higher we, they are the higher class, we should say, a higher level of Pitras of the heavenly region. They have such, they have that capacity, they have a power to bless us to bless us. So much so with that in mind, that is why we take time out from the Deva's worship. We suspend that then. We put it on hold. So we would not do the yajnas, we will not have the weddings or the grand major events because even the Deutas, they take this time to worship these, to they worship their ancestors. You see? And then again, what comes to my mind, devotees, yes, our scriptures tells us clearly that this is a time the Pitras are allowed to descend from that region, from the Pitralok region. In the Garupan, I mean, I walk, I walk with my text, maybe in Vedo and in the, probably in discussion, maybe I would reveal it, I, I don't have a data quote from it. But the, especially for the Amawasya, which will be on Monday, it is... Where there's a certain link, as I said, it, it comes from, you know, it's within the Gaurupan, definitely I could find it and quote it and tell you. But uh, with, 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 all, with all the conditions in alignment like that, particularly so, the Pitras devotees too, they have that capacity, they are very close to us. We know, what scriptures tells us, that this is a time they are allowed, they are amongst us. They are here upon the very earth, they are allowed to come to visit the home of their descendants. And when we take the time to make the offerings during this time, in whatever form or fashion, whatever you can manage, but by making those offerings, your Pitras will be so happy and you will get the kind of blessings you receive, my dear friends, devotees. I tell you, I'm sure you've heard it, but you know it is said, the Pitras' blessings are even greater than the Deuters. So you see, two weeks, we have an, a golden opportunity. We have such a, yeah, I have to remember it's only once in the year. This time we have Nauratri. Nauratri is just coming after. We have two Nauratri. As a matter of fact, not to confuse you, but there are also two other mini, two other Nauratri, what is called Gupta Nauratri. So if you're really going to be specific, you can say there's four Nauratri. Look at how much time we have for Devi. I'm not talking about on Mondays or on Fridays where we worship the Devi, but you know, all the Devas have their special time. Ganesh Baba, we, have, we had Ganesh Jayanti, Ganesh Utsav, but m a month after month, we have Ganesh Chaut, Lord Shiva, Maha Shivratri, but in the month too, we have many Shiv monthly Shivratris too. So all the Deodras and Devis, they have their time, so much spread out throughout the year. But you see, this time, the Pitra Paksh, what a grand time it is, what a wonderful, most auspicious time. It might be inauspicious, 
to begin new ventures and so forth. But devoted is very auspicious for us to make that little offering to help those souls. Because I always say, we do not know what condition those souls may be in. Right? We are fortunate and blessed. We are here being blessed to hear the beautiful bhajans, to listen to maybe the messages, to benefit from Katha and all these beautiful things, the message itself. We have an opportunity that we can enrich, that we can improve our life, that we can change our own things. This is a time to reflect, to remember the ancestors. Yes, to make the offerings. It is a reminder to us all. Petra Paksh reminds us all that one day to come, we all have to face the inevitable, which is death. One day we all have to leave this world. Just as the Pitras, there will come a time when we too also have to leave. So whatever good you can do, do it now. Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today as the saying goes. And what you have to do today, do it now. Samay na awa ta barambar, time opportunity will never repeat itself. Devotees, as I will always say, tomorrow is promised to no one. So, do what you have to do. So, if a person did not observe anything, they did not get a chance to do anything, hey, we have tomorrow. We still have tomorrow and worst case scenario, we have Monday. Definitely. I've been endorsing that. That is the Mahalaya, the Amawasya. Most auspicious too. Okay? And whatever you do, especially on Monday, that will help not only your family, but will help all, all souls. Because we are dealing with Lord Krishna, another great myth. We are dealing with Lord Krishna. The focus, everything is on Lord Krishna. The offering, the mantras, everything is to Lord Krishna. It is sad where people today are still calling and asking, messaging me. Uh, you know, people are scared. At the same time, I'm happy too. Eh? More people because, I'm, as a matter of fact, I was saying, Brother Anand too, I ran late. Because the whole day I was tied up in Shrad, running from, going from puja to puja. Long ago, I used to look forward to Pitrapak. I used to call it Pandit a vacation on a holiday. We used to get a little holiday. I used to call it a calm before the storm because now Rakshri, everybody is busy. We are all so tied up. Everybody wants puja in now Rakshri. From now, especially going all... Now, Pitrapak is so busy, especially on the weekend because everybody wants to do their little Gita part, their little Hawan. But as people say, Baba, please come and do a little Hawan. Do something small so that we can take out the food. So I am, on one side, I'm very happy People are getting so much involved. That speaks volumes because one point in time we were just I was just home watching TV, relaxing, I could, you know, as I said, it was like holiday for me. You know? Some pundits I think they're still in a bit quiet, so they take a little vacation, so then they travel again, go abroad. I don't know, you know, but now people is like I tell you it's it's quite busy now, eh? people are getting involved. But on the other side, there's yeah, still a yet, you know, quite a lot of a certain amount of fear and it's regrettable to hear people uh, you know. Um, making excuses and saying they ask him questions but Baba how you could feel a dead person and they just give you the famous Trini line how they say you can't feel the what the dead horse what you can't feel a dead horse in the grass I understand that no problem but we're not dealing with the horse we're not dealing with the physical being but we're dealing with the soul right the soul which is energy which cannot be created nor destroyed but merely transform from one state to the next so we're dealing with the soul, that energy. And the sister will endorse what I'm saying too, but you see the, you with the offering, the shrad, the love, the energy, the love that you put into it. It's the same thing in puja. Bhagwan don't physically partake of the prasad, but it's the bhav. They say, how, it's it? how, is it? how does we say it? It is not what you offer, but how you offer. Sab se uchi prema sadai, the love, the energy, your thought, all that energy. We're dealing with even the food. You see, the actual performance, the offering, that energy is important. And you're offering that to the Lord, to Bhagwan Krishna. So He partakes that. He knows you're praying with sincerity. Some of us, maybe when we're making that offerings, we're thinking of our love and our families. Maybe the memories, maybe tears may come to the eyes. So much emotion and devotion into it. And that is what Bhagwan partakes of. It's the same thing. When our Rakshri comes and we'll be, we'll be doing our puja and we'll be offering to the Devi. That is what Mother partakes of. Not necessarily love Sahari and how much nice sweets and all what you have in the Tarya, but it is the love that is coming out from your heart. That is what Bhagwan partakes of. That is what the Lord wants. Patram 
patram pushpan phalam toyam yo me bhakti prayachiti the lord says give me simple if it is a leaf right hmm? patram the leaf pushpam the flower phalam the fruit toyam water and think about it those are some of the basic ingredients we use in our puja even when it comes to pitra bhakshu and we are dealing with lord krishna so we make those offerings and we pray that oh bhagwan bless our ancestors we think of them we invoke them remember them and lord krishna he says i am the root so when you give the root don't worry about all the branches and the leaves you deal with the root lord krishna is the root so once you water the root every part going to get it all the branches all the leaves the fruits everything lord krishna will ensure that your pitras wherever they are he will provide for them it is the energy you are transmitting see energy so you're dealing with that and the krishna will ensure that your pitras benefit yes they could have reincarnated we do not know where exactly they may be in what form i'll tell you right but uh, definitely this time is set aside for us to make a difference to make a difference you could help not only your family as i mentioned but you could help also what about those people who didn't do anything good in their life like karna how putra bakshi he did what he gave only the food sorry he only gave the gold and the silver the money right only the physical thing if you know the money itself he neglected to give anadan he didn't give his charity he didn't feed it and so forth and so when he was suffering look how he begged he got a chance right he got a chance to come back and to make up for his neglect or what do you say again local terms go for lock is not see for lock eh so what karna got away what what he got away with you feel we go get away with it right that's why the kathas are there so that we can learn from even we learn the good and we learn even from the wrongs too so whatever wrong he did whatever he mistakes he made the katha is meant for us to improve our life so that we would not make that same mistake that we can make a difference that is why we have life life is a sweet thing my dear bhaktas is a gift indeed a gift to be enjoyed it don't look at it as a problem some people will always look at it as a problem and complain i always say it every morning when you wake up say i'm blessed don't say i'm stressed you understand be positive you think positive you be positive good things will come to you positive things will follow you don't think about the negative things about it don't be deluded don't be fooled and carried away as a hindu right it is our daily duty to worship to remember ancestors that is a form of gratitude pitra paksh is one of those great occasion for us to demonstrate gratitude because we are forever indebted and most grateful to our ancestors to those who were here before us for those who are responsible for us being here today for the success and what we enjoy today remember it is the sweat it is the sacrifice of those ancestors how can we ever repay them think of your own parents maybe your pet for those parents who were passed on how can you ever repay them for all that they have done hmm? look at what sarvan kumar did for his parents to while you are alive think about that right so yes pitra paksh remember is a reminder to make the sacrifices don't wait for when it, it, it pitra paksh speaks so much to everybody it is telling you that oh man you know i it's a memorial time it's a, it deals with life it is telling us two major things appreciate people now while they're alive and even when they pass on and they leave is not the end of it all continue to keep them alive celebrate their life remember them make the offerings pray to lord krishna make the offerings so that these souls will be happy and oh man you will be so blessed you will be rewarded don't look for don't know what for what rewards as lord krishna again says your duty is to work do not be attached to the fruit they off right don't be attached don't look for some gains don't look ask for some reward but you will be greatly blessed remember what goes around comes around so what you do now when the time comes for you and i when we also have to leave all the good karmas all the charity everything that we would have done this will help us when our time comes to think about that the pitras are here make them happy everybody you know make them happy the lord bless them and the lord say look go i given you a two weeks go and visit your families go and look see go and see how they going bless them 
you know and devotees they have come don't make them sad don't make them unhappy right some petras will be leaving going back to their to their realm happy and i'm sure there are uh, there are many to who will be leaving going back sad i always say that and one of the great curses you could get is the srap of the petras one of the great curses i tell you hmm? I'm sure you all know these terms well. This is why we tell children, we tell them, listen to your parents. One of the great, especially even when they are alive, don't let your mother's tears fall to the ground. We tell children, listen, obey, don't make them unhappy, right? Don't make them cry on you, you know, and you know how some of the, you know, again, local terms, sometimes parents say, oh God, Baba, they come and they complain, the child not listening, the child giving trouble, oh God, Baba, better plant a fig tree than have this child. That's the kind of thing we hear, you know. It's sad when you hear parents complain and saying that about their own children, you know. So, that's why we say again, heaven lies at the feet of thy mother and thy father. I'm just using parents as an example. So, get their blessings while they're alive. Make sure treat them right. Be like a servant, Kumar. Treat your parents right. And it's your duty too. Even when they pass on, when those great souls leave this world, it is your duty to keep them alive, to make them happy, gratify them, satisfy them by observing Petra Paksh and doing what you have to do. So with these few words, let me stop here and uh, we'll, you know, of course, take it as it comes again and enjoy the other activities of the night. And we, will, um, we are there to interact and to share some time with you. So devotees, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Dara Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Let us say Om Sarve Pitri Yo Namaha As we bow to our Pitras Let us say Om Sarve Pitri Atma Shanti As we pray in the Lord's name Shanti Peace and blessing To our Pitras May our Pitras be happy May they bless all of us here tonight Bless this gathering Bless this occasion Brinda Bandi Hari Rali Ki Jai Shri Krishna Jai Krishna Hari Thank you Pandadev Always informative as usual I think we will, we will invite the band to do a rendition for us I will introduce uh, Sister Devi, give some background on her and then she will take the mic and share her discourse for the rest of the evening At the end of it, uh, if you have any questions for either her or Pandit Dev or Pandit Jagannan, you're free to ask questions, but you know, for the benefit of everybody else, if you want to whisper it in my ears and I will come and ask, there's no problem. If you want to WhatsApp me, you could do it too. I know if you want to send it telepathically, you could do that too, but I kind of rust you with that. So there's however you would want to get the information across, and you want to ask the study of your Pandit Dev, you can do that, but, all right? Sounds good? All right, great. So to the band, Samadhi from Maraval.
Sitaram, Sitaram, Thanks, Michael, from the band Samadhi. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Sister Devi, who I met five years ago while she was uh, in Trinidad preparing to return from New York, where she lived for over 25 years. A very uh, memorable time speaking to her over the phone. I remember my mother set up an appointment to talk to some psychic from New York. Uh, I didn't know I came home from work one evening and she told me I had an appointment to talk to the sister baby. So I said, okay, great. So I'm going to speak to a psychic. Uh, when I, when I uh, spoke, uh, got, got through to her on the phone, uh, sister baby would have been doing the readings after work where she worked at Wall Street as an investment banker. You, you wouldn't know this, but sister baby has a master's degree in banking and finance. Um, so it, it really is amazing to be spiritually blessed and also have the world of finance and that knowledge behind as well. So usually when she gives me some financial advice, I, I prefer I prefer listen to that sometimes more because it's easier. Um, but yes, yeah, speaking to her over the phone, I, I didn't know what to ask Sister Baby. You know, um, it was really amazing to to speak to somebody like her because it was a difference. You know, you would, you would talk to many different people. But when you when I heard her voice, I'd, I never met her before, I didn't know her before. But I knew it was something uh, spiritual, something divine in the way she communicated. And I think uh, all of you who are sitting here, hearing her on the radio, will probably see me on television at some uh, point or some feeling that you may have had that, yes, Sister Baby, somebody who is genuine. It's somebody who you can listen to, you can take advice from. And I guess this is why the turnout is the way it is today. And I must say, in the five years after uh, Sister Devi has returned, uh, we formed the Red Chariot Foundation in 2011. Uh, Sister Devi Balkaran uh, met Sister Devi before myself. I was the last member to meet her in 2011. And when she came here, I asked her, after 25 years in New York, what's the purpose of coming back to Trinidad? And she told me her mission uh, was very simple, was to give knowledge and charity. Uh, then we started to discuss how we're going to be doing this charity, how Sister is going to be giving her knowledge. And this is when the radio programs came along on Heritage Radio and 106.5. We decided to get some funding for that. And in September 2011, we formed the Red Chariot Foundation. But we were doing charity even way before when she returned to Trinidad early in 2011. So our mission really uh, has been quite a few years in the making in terms of Sister giving you knowledge through radio. Uh, after that, we did uh, appearances in different temples doing discourses just like this, where she would share her knowledge. Uh, and then also focusing on charity and the, the, many of you all would know that we ask for donations 
to get their reading privately over the phone or if you come to meet her personally. And that is what really fuels the charity because it's very difficult to get funding just like that. You know, especially now with the economic situation as it is. So really and truly, you know, all of the Chariot members would have felt this way because we, we would have had members come in on stream along the way. You know, and Sister Davy is somebody who I learned quite a lot from. Many of you all, she would have spoken about this. A uh, very simple person, I must say. Uh, her diet is amazing, no onion and garlic and nothing. You know, sometimes when she goes to the supermarket, I will take her to the supermarket, she will be reading the labels, oh, this has onion powder, this has garlic powder, I can't have this, I can't have that. Whenever she, like I said on the radio this week, whenever she goes to eat by somebody's home, or in a restaurant or whatever, or in some ramen or satsang, she will always ask for disposable uh, wear, because everything for her is vibration. She's so highly intuitive that she picks up the frequency. All of us emit a frequency. We, we emit some level of vibration, and this is what she uses through her abilities to do the readings for us. So everything affects her. You know, many times when people call on the phone, or even in person when you come to see her, um, because she's an empath, that means as a person who can actually feel your pain. All right, that is that is one of the abilities she has. But there's a good ability or a bad ability, I don't know. But here it is, she has the ability to feel or experience whether it's emotional pain, whatever suffering you have. That is what an empath is called. She can actually feel that. Sometimes on the radio, you don't know, but she has tears in her eyes because when parents call you with losing a loved one or a child via accident, all of that, she is able to perceive. You know, and the list goes on and on. But you know, this is just a brief introduction into Sister Davy and having met her for five years now, uh, all the members of your Red Chariot, we have learned so much and by extension you and we hope we can do more radio programs. Um, and we are very grateful for Pandit Dave for being such a gracious host in welcoming us every time we ask. You know, and we're hoping we can expand that as well to TV. We you know we have been on real TV for a, a little while now. Hansley has left and moved on. And when TV itself is going through changes because of the passing of Mr. Jai Karan, you know, so without any further ado, I will welcome Sister Devi to the mic. Thank you, Brother Anna. Jai Jai Sitara. So straighten up your back. You know, I always start with the Gayatri Mantra three times. Why three times? Because we all have this energy. At the base of our, of our spine, as um, Panditji Jagannandan was saying. And from the base of the spine, it comes up, it comes all the way up to the top. And that is why you see in pictures, you see like the snakes covering Lord Vishnu, or you see the Buddha, they are snakes. Or sometimes you'll see it as a tree. So I'll explain more of that. But for now, I want you to picture this beautiful golden white light emanating from your entire being, going outwardly to your favorite god or goddess. Your divine energy is merging with that one. Are you all ready? Om Bhu Bhuva Swaha Tat Saviture Varhenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dhyo Yona Prachodayat Om Bhu Tat Saviture Varhenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yona Prachodayat Om Bhur Bhuvaswaha Tat Saviture Varhenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yona Prachodayat Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti First I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out, for taking this time to spend with us this afternoon. I also want to thank Pandit uh, uh, Dev Rampasad and Pandit Jagannandan who I have known for quite some time. Um, his wife and I are very good friends in New York. And I also want to thank members of the Red Chariot Foundation, especially Baby Balkaran, 
you know, for hosting this event here. It's such a blessing to be in your company and also to all the other members as well and especially to the band. You know, I don't, I, I have never met Michael for the longest while he has been saying he wants a reading. But, um, brother, I promise you one. <laughs> and uh, to all the members of the, um, the band as well and to the sound system as well and the cameraman. Thank you also very much. Well, you know, today, well, while I was in New York, as you all know, I was in New York for two months. And I got this vision that we must have a satsang based on the souls. And when I came back, you know, the same, the next day I came to see baby and I said, you know, sis, I got this vision, we must have the satsang, but we must have it here. And she says, sis, go ahead. It's all yours. She didn't ask any questions. And brother Anil said the same thing. He's like, okay, let's organize, you know. And, you know, Pandadev Rampasad um, and the other Pandajaganan mentioned about souls and what happens before the soul crosses over. And I know a lot of you have questions and I promise you I'll take questions from you afterwards and Pandadev also will be willing to, to take a few uh, questions as well. But before the soul crosses over, let me just give you an example. Let's say somebody is old and dying. Before I say that, you all know about me, right? You've heard me on radio, right? I don't want to surprise anybody with any strange information. Some people might be like, okay, she could see dead people. Yeah, I could see dead people. Because <laughs> guess what, they are not dead. They are very much alive, right? So let's say an old lady, she's lying down, she's dying. And, and some of you have had experiences where this, this person, an RG, for example, she's calling out to her, her relatives who already crossed. And you're saying, but RG, they are dead already, they are dead. How come she can see these souls and you cannot see these souls? Does that make sense? How come your loved one is dying and they're calling for people who already died years ago? Ten, uh, maybe 10 years ago. And they're calling out, they're coming for me. And this name or that name, they're coming for me. Now isn't that interesting? So where, and what's happening between that soul that is crossing over and that soul that is coming to get them? What happens is that we all have an energy. We are all energy. We are not this physical body. We think we are this physical body because we are living and we are touching things materially. We are eating, we are drinking, we are having fun. But again, two inches above your body, uh, uh, from us, the side, right? Let's just say your hands, around your body. There is a sheet. It's called the etheric sheet. And, or the sharira, right, Pandaji? I don't know too much about the pandit work and so on, but it's, um, it's, it's called the etheric sheet or the astral sheet or some people know it as the auric sheet now that sheet is right within us from the navel string you know when you you come out of your mother's womb you know they they cut that physical navel string the string right within that within your navel now there is a thread a thread a thin very thin layer of thread that is attached to your astral body believe it or not it's very very easy for me, I can see it, and for other, some people can see it. Children can see that astral body in you, and animals can see it. We all have that. Once we are alive, that's what we carry with us. Within that etheric sheet, or within that astral sheet, everything that you have in your mind is stored there. Every single thing. No thoughts are, are just out there. It's like Brother Anil says something about, I can pick up your vibration. But those thoughts, what you carry with you, that mind is within that etheric sheet. So when you also cross, what goes with you, if I'm going too fast, please stop me. Because I know we are limited on time. But what happens is when you are ready to leave this physical body, that etheric sheet, the thread, it snaps. Now if it's, you're just lying there, like I said, RG is in that passing, that will gently leave and it can travel. It can go thousands and thousands of miles. That thread with your astral body can go to different places. Not just this physical world, but to different universes. It can go different places. It can see you. So if your loved one is passing, they can see you. You cannot see them. Am I making any sense? Right? Well, if, if it's an accident, the astral sheet just snaps. If it is a car accident or an accident, somebody falls, it snaps out. That's a different story. If it's suicide, that's terrible. I always talk about suicide. That's the greatest sin 
anyone can commit. Do you understand that? Because when that, uh, that uh, thread snaps out from the body, there's no coming back. If it's suicide and the soul sees that from the other side, it looks at the body, it tries to jump back in, and it cannot. That is why in Hinduism it is said, when someone dies by accident or suicide, get rid of the body the next day. Do not keep the body for too long, because the soul cries and the soul grieves. My dear friends, this is not my knowledge. This is Garuda Purana knowledge. This is absolutely real. You know, it's... It's just, amaz it's just amazing how much information is out there, as Pandadev said. Now people are trying to find out more and more. And it's a slow process, but it's, it's surely a, a process. It's happening. And we are awakening. Believe it or not, we are spiritually awakening to the reality that we are not just here and then that's it. You know, like a stone. Once a stone is here, it doesn't have any feelings in it, it doesn't have any thoughts in it. We are this spiritual being and we are having an experience. When we leave this physical body, and we go, where do we go? What happens? What happens? Do you know? It depends on your own karma. It depends on your thoughts, your words, and your action. That is why it's imperative to try to change. As Pandaji says, have one good thought every morning. Every morning you think one good thought. Right? Um, what I want to touch on is this uh, Pitri Paksh. Again, this is absolutely real. For me personally, I get the opportunity to see all these souls coming down at the same time. How? I mean, how is that possible? Who knew this information thousands and thousands of years ago or eons ago? Because for me, I sit in meditation and I can actually see all of them dropping. No, the only ones that doesn't drop, those are the pure souls. The souls that are Swami, real Swamis. The souls that are divine beings. Those are the souls that doesn't come true, doesn't come down. But when you see all these souls, and again, it doesn't have anything to do with religion or race or whatever difference, whatever, you know, it has to do with the soul. So let's say an Indian soul, you're coming down to spend that time with your family and your loved ones. It doesn't matter what religion you were before in the physical body. As I said on Pandadev's program on Thursday, I don't need a name, nor do I need a date of birth to read for you. Why? Because you are temporary. I know your real name, and that real name exists on a higher region. Some say it's the um, Rasi name, but that's, it's still a higher name. How I do my readings, it's through the astral, again, the etheric or the astral body, it's called the Akashic Records. There is such a place that exists, and it is also spoken of in the um, Vishnu Puranas. And, also in the, um, the Lingam Purana, right? About this place that holds all the records. So Akashic is like a, a place that holds all your records, past, present, and future. When, like on the day you go to the, you get a Patra reading, they read that Patra. It's accurate based on the time you came here, on the time that your soul came through, the, the got a body. And it also depends on when where you were before. So he, the pundits can read or the astrologer can read every single thing. It's no different for me. I can read everything, but I don't need that book in front of me because I can see it. I can see your life. Once you let me in, that's how it works. I cannot come up to this guy and say, you know, um, I, could, I could worry you for you. I could see something with you. I cannot do that. That is um, illegal in my books because there are laws we must all follow. There's something called universal law. How many, people, how many of you know about universal law? Universal law is not human law that you break a red light, you'll get a ticket. Universal law has to do with God himself or God herself. And those laws were written. Okay, we all have to follow universal law. One for the first law is do not take your own life. Do not do that. Second law would be everyone has free will. The free will to marry whoever you want, the free will to leave, the free will to move on, to travel, to do whatever you want. But you know something? How many of you actually know about that free will? How many of you execute that free will? A lot of people, especially in relationships, would say, well, my husband says so and so, so I have to obey him. And you leave it so, so your husband have all the, the rules, or your wife have all, take all the rules. 
you know, but there's something called free will. All right? I, I, I would prefer to take questions from you. It can be personal if you have a question. Or it can be about worldly stuff or spiritual stuff. Because I know time is, I want, and I want to give everybody a chance. And um, you know, when I was on Ponder Day's program on Thursday, but just past Thursday, oh, most of you heard me? You all heard me? Right. And I said, if you want, you can bring like a ring or something. I can also read that. The energy in that. How do I do that, you ask? Again, I'm operating from a different frequency. When you listen to AM and FM station, and you have to tune the radio, you know, to get a good station, you know, the music you want. And let's say it's an AM station, you have to switch it to FM. It's a station, it's a frequency that I'm using. And it's at a higher pace. That's why Brother Anil said, you know, I could eat stuff. I have to be very careful what I eat. I have to be very careful what I, what I do. You know something? Even everything in my book, everything is done by them, by the higher, by the gods. Not by me anymore. Every single thing. So if I could pick up the energy in your ring, but you have to be wearing it, eh? a ring, an earring, whatever. But you have to be wearing it. You cannot just come and give it to me and you have it in the box. It now we, you know. So you have to have some energy. If it's a loved one that crawls, and you know, you guys can ask, how do I see these loved ones? You know, for the two weeks that these pictures are here, they have been bothering me a lot. Like sometimes I cannot even sleep because they'll come into my room, my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, my friend, father, brother, Anil's brother, sister, baby's brother, brothers, they will come and have a conversation and I could have a conversation with them because I can see them clearly and I'll tell them, get out. But you can't see them, but you know what? They are watching you and they are talking to you when you are cooking that food for them or when you're in your kitchen or you're driving to work and your thoughts are with your, your dad, let's say your father passed away or your mother, they are sitting right there, you know. And we have different, you know, the pictures and the good ones and they go back to these physical, these spiritual realms. There are many places when you cross, it's not just heaven. Heaven is like, there are different locus, different, many, many different locus. Which one are you going to? There is one that, when you look at a picture of Lord Hanuman, you see the back red and the sky is red, the, sea, the ocean is red. That's a true, that is a true representation of Lord Hanuman's um, home. When you look at Lord Krishna and you see green and you see the green background and stuff, that's another home. Our seers, our rishis, our munis, they used to travel, like astral travel again. You all understand astral travel? Right? You leave the body, not the physical body, but you leave via the astral sheet again. And they used to travel and they used to visit these beautiful, beautiful places. And they would come back and just draw. I wish I could draw because some of the places I have been to, it's unbelievable. And some of you will end up in some of those places. One place I would tell you, it's, a, it's like a savanna. It's with greenery. It's beautiful. It has a waterfall. And it's a place for you to contemplate your wrongs. What you did wrong or what you did not do when you came here to, make, to do a special something. You did not finish your job. That is a really a place, and that, that was actually shown in the movie Avatar, that place. You know, and there was, a, like I said, Lord Krishna's planet. How many of you are going to Lord Krishna's planet? You're going to Lord Krishna's, excellent, excellent. <laughs> you know, so there are so many different um, realms that we can go to, but you know, human nature is like that. We have the opportunity, we have the ability to reach for higher, higher grounds, right? Instead of going higher, we tend to think lower, so therefore we go lower. And then we end up with a, a bad body. The next life around, it's not a body that you wanted. And even in this life, people are complaining, oh God, you know, you could have a better job, you know. But that's how it is. It's because you deserve that body. That body was given to you specifically for a reason to play your part. You cannot, you cannot be comfortable in my body, nor can I be comfortable in yours, right? The soul fits in there. And also, if you don't take care of this body in this life, do you know how hard it is, how difficult it is to get a body? When we cross and we realize our mistakes, and you look back at this physical body, because I've had many experiences where the soul says, hmm, this was my body, I can't believe that. And they say, well, they're waiting for another body. Do you know how long they have to wait? 
If the soul took another body, I could tell you where they were born. I can tell you if they were man or woman or male or female. But if the soul did not take a body, then I can commu communicate with that soul, with a, whatever realm. Once you come to visit me, let's say Petri Paksha is over, I can still see the souls. I can still communicate with them. But I would have, once you tell me you want to, you know, how your father is doing or how your mother or your child, I will call on that soul, to, please, come visit. Tell us how you are doing and then they go back. They go back. But then there are many, many souls on the other side without a body and they are just walking around. They are ghosts. You don't have to be afraid of them. There's nothing to be afraid of when, when we talk about the dead. But we don't, dead. We don't die. We, we are not souls. We are souls. You know? So what happens... You know, so many people are afraid. I remember one person calling the radio station with Pandey Dave, and that was a couple months ago. And she's like, Sister, a man died next door by me. You think he's coming over by me? Pandey Dave, you remember that? And I said, What? No, he's not coming over by you. He had better things to do with himself than to be haunting you. And, and how many times we have had that where people are like, I think it's about a ghost. Or some villager die and and the villager used to probably drink and stuff and you feel the ghost is by you. No. Don't be afraid. Tell it to leave. If you send something or you, you get a vibe, let's say you smell a perfume, right? Your loved one's coming through. You smell a perfume they liked when they were alive. Talk to them. Say, listen, I know you're here. It's Petri Paksha. It's okay. But after Petri Paksha is over and the souls have to go back to where they came from, and they visit you, you tell them, listen, thanks for coming, I appreciate you coming to visit me, but it's time for you to go back home into the light. Do not encourage your, your loved ones to stick around, because you're not doing something good for them and for yourself. You're creating more baggage. How many people have back pain? Raise your hands. Don't feel shame. <laughs> you know why? Because it's baggage we are carrying. It's baggage. Baggage of hurt, pain, emotional stress, distress. Don't carry any baggage. It's easy to say, easier said than done, right? And that's another program. But let me come back to the souls. When your loved one crosses, leave this body, this physical body. There's no way they can come back here. But they can stick around via the astral body. They will cry if you cry. Let's say you go to a funeral and you're crying. I went to a funeral last week, and it was a Christian funeral, and um, everybody was so, so calm, you know, nobody was holding down the box and thing, and it was just all normal, and all of a sudden, I just wanted to, I started to cry, like, you know, before it, it was um, at that cremation site, what's the name of, you know, and I just started to cry because the soul was crying, the soul was crying and crying and crying, and I said, Oh my God, the soul is grieving because the family wasn't, were in the front. They were not screaming, but they were grieving and holding on and they did not want to let go of the body. That is not good for the soul. You know, because the soul sees everything without a physical body. Now it's more alive. The soul becomes more psychic. When we cross, we are, we are all psychic. We are all visionaries because we can see, hear, smell everything. So remember, when you go to a funeral or your loved one passes, wish them well. Stop this thing about bawling and crying because it's not good. It's not good at all. We have to send vibration, vibration of light, vibration of peace. If you are a Christian, you say, oh Christ, please come into this, come help this soul to cross. If you are a Hindu, you say the same, oh Krishna, oh Krishna, please help the soul. Most of the times, you know, especially with Hindus, I notice that in Trinidad especially, a lot of devotees are Hanuman worshippers. More Hanuman than, than Krishna. And what I see is the Hanuman standing right beside the soul, holding on to that soul. And it's just amazing. It's just amazing. You have to really believe, right? So it's, it, there's a lot of information out there on souls and, and crossing over. I can go into details about many things of you know, where the souls are concerned. But again, it will take another katha to do that. And I want to give you the opportunity. This is not our program. This is not Red Chariot's program. This is for you, each and every one of you. You know, if, if, if 
I had to say, you know, I, you know, to do this, I would say, nah, find something else for me to do. But when God chooses you to do something, you have to do it to the best of your ability. I didn't want to come back to Trinidad. It took me two months and my daughter said, no, I'm not buying you a ticket to go back. And I said, well, I have to go back. I have work to do. And I called Brother Anil and I said, you know, Sassy doesn't want to buy me a ticket. So could you please hook me up? And he says, fine, okay. You know, because I have all my friends, my family, you know, my, my children are there. But if my duty is to serve here, then I was put here for a reason. But I'm only here temporarily. I'm not here forever. And neither are you. One day I will become a pre or a, a, a soul from to, to cross over. What kind of soul would I become? A good soul? Would I be a hungry ghost? And you've heard stories of hungry ghosts and so on. What kind of soul are you going to become? One day you will be an ancestor soul. What what messages or what lessons? Are you teaching your children now? So when you cross, they can do the right thing. Have you ever thought about that? Did that ever cross your mind? Hmm, one day I'll become an ancestor soul. One day I'll have to go to. I wonder who will cry for me. I wonder who will take out food for me. Right? We have to remember those things and live accordingly, according to that. Because we know we, are not, we don't belong here. This earth is temporary. So we were given this material body just to use you know, for the time that we, we spent here. So with that, I will tell you, and, and before I, I say, it, before I give it to you, again, when we take out food for our loved ones that cross, they cannot physically eat the food because they don't have a physical body, right? What they do is they come and they stand up and they smell that food. The smell attracts them. When you are cooking that food, believe it or not, they are there, you know, in that kitchen talking and watching you because it's like they got an opportunity to be human again, but without the body, right? So remember, if you're cooking food for your loved ones at cross, talk to them, have a conversation with them like as if they're there. Do not be afraid of them. Stop all the scary stories and stuff. For Halloween, I'll tell you some really scary stories, <laughs> you know, because they do exist, but not your loved ones. They're not here to provoke you. They're not here to terrify you. Yes, there are some relatives who come through with mischievous, mischievousness and so on. But your loved ones are here to bless you as Pandit Dev said. They are not here to hurt you or harm you. All right? I know a lot of people, a lot of parents lost children and so on, and they have been reaching out to us. But just know when a child, and even a, a soul that was pure, maybe 15, 16, passes on, they go directly into the light. They do not step left or right. They go straight home. Home is where you came from. Home is not here. All right? So where, where children are concerned, just remember your loved ones are with the angelic beings or celestial beings. All right? The Bible spoke of them. The Hindu scriptures talk about them. The, Is the, uh, the Quran speaks about these things as well. Right? These angelic beings are real. Right? There's so, there so much information out there. I can tell you what to go, where to go. But the easiest way to find that God within you, as Pandit Jagannam said, whatever happens on the outside, or what happens on the inside, on the outside, it happens inside us. I am not operating from the outside. I'm operating from the inside. Whatever goes on out there is inside of me. So think about this for a second. There are storms happening. You see some terrible weathers, freak storms happening. Don't you think that is starting and stemming from us? Because of our thought patterns, our actions, our mind. Whatever goes on on the outside is starting from us. So here it is, we, human beings, have become so angry, so agitated, short-tempered, and the earth is playing itself out in, those, in that way. Isn't that true? So when you start, tr you, you try to change. You don't change overnight. You don't say, one morning I get up, I want to be pure. No, it don't work like that. Take your time. As I always say, whatever kind of music you like, play that music and enjoy and be happy. You know, when uh, Michael, you were singing and I was hearing your voice, that chant from a higher region, the tabla player, the drummer, the, uh, the, everybody here. I was listening, not to them here, but to how they perform at a higher pace, at a higher region. It's the same thing, again, with sound. Sound vibration. 
everything is sound, as the pundit said with the chakras. When I close my eyes and I meditate, I can hear a sound in each chakra, right? That sound that when you're talking or you're singing or you're sleeping and you're snoring, that is just a, a sound. But there's a higher sound. You can hear it through your ears. And the only way to do that is to calm your mind. Bring your thoughts down. Don't have too much, don't fight it. Don't fight it at all. There's no sen sense in fighting anything. Take it easy. And don't stress out if your kids are not listening or your family or they're having problems, financial. If you ride the wave, you're going to, you're going to live. But anytime you start to beat up, you're going to drown. Think about it like that. Problems, problems, problems. Problems after the next, one after the next. It's all because your thoughts, your mind is corrupt. It becomes more corrupt. More corrupt because the more thoughts you add on more. Oh God, I lost my job. I might never get a job. So you drop now. Again, you drop to a lower level. Because you think lower. I might, I, you start to think negative. I will not get a job. I will not get a house. I will not. I will not. Change it. There's something called affirmations. Affirmations means you think, I am a better person today. I'm going to have money today. I'm going to buy groceries today. I don't have any money, but groceries will come. Think positive thoughts. And positive things will follow you. I'm telling you. All right? So Jai Jai Sitaram. And thank you again, Chandra. Thank you so much. And um, I'll leave it up to you, Brother Anil. Okay. Wow. This is a shy person. The person gave me a ring. Um, sometimes sad. Sometimes lonely, even though they're in a relationship. All right, I'm not going to call names. I'm not going to say anything to who it is. But this person, sometimes she thinks too much. They think too much. And they, but they're going to be okay. Where money is concerned, that person will be okay. All right, Brother Anil? Yeah, come All right. So anybody, we will give a mic to the audience. My son was very, very kind-hearted, a very loving person. Sometimes he would just, when you're talking to him, he would not listen. He would just, his mind will be elsewhere. I feel like he's beating drums or he likes yes. music. He's, he used to be drum. He used to be drum? Yes. Okay, because I, I am hearing the drums and he says, Ma, Ma, I'm beating that drum with a Krishna. He says, Ma, I'm beating that drum. I, you know when Brother Anil says I'm an empath. I can pick up the vibration when the souls are crying. And he's crying tears of joy. He says, I got everything you gave me, you know. He used to talk like that. Yes. Ma, yes. I got everything you gave I me. Yes. So he's doing well. Now, again, we can learn from each other, right? Do not remember him in the box. They don't call it a coffin. They call it a box. Because it is a box. Do not take pictures of your loved ones that crossed over. They do not like that. Do not remember them then, because he's very much alive, and he's playing the drums. So be happy for that. Okay. You know, I, and again, he's, he's not okay, he's great. He was your son in this life, because you gave him a body. But let me ask you a question, who gave him a soul? Lord Krishna. That's right. He's with me. He's with Lord Krishna. He told me, and he's always smiling, and told me, I am fine, mom, good, surprise. Yes, but I know it's hard to lose a loved one, but you did not lose him. You, you're, you're good. You were fortunate to have him for so long. Okay. Thank you. Somebody is quite shy. Um, the person's father passed away. Nanla Maraj, 96 years. Today would have been three weeks. Was it, well, you see, I prefer they ask themselves because I can't ask you if the man was shaking before. You know, I, I you don't know what the man might eat. 96, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And if anybody have questions for Pandit Dev as well, feel free. I want to encourage Pandit Dev to come up and... Yes, uh, Brother Anand, just come. Carry the mic, then go to the back. Okay.
You know, while we are waiting, you know, sometime on the day, on Thursday, this past Thursday, after I, I did my readings on the day, you say, hmm, how you do that? I was like, um, easy. <laughs> sit around, just a yeah, little sit around. Sit around, everybody. On the day, sit around. It's my father, 96, passed away today for three weeks. Okay, and he was shaken before he passed? Put the mic by your... Okay. No. Was he shaky, a bit shaky? Yes, sir, 96 days. Yeah, because yeah. he's coming through shaky. Yeah. And he had like bushy eyebrows? Yes, he did. Yeah, because <laughs> he's laughing. He says he thought he would have never leave here. Uh -huh. Yeah, because he said he left long. He took long. Sometimes he would talk about going home. Yes. And passing and leaving or yes. dying, yes. as you all know. He says he finally reached home. He says he says he, he have his hands open and he says, I reach home. I reach home. And he's like old school. Yes. Right? Yes. So he's saying, I reach home, you know door. I reach home. So he's doing great. And he says, Thank you for everything. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Don't be shy, you know, because we are all related, believe it or not, we are all family. But there's somebody in the back. Hi. Stand up, stand up. And, and, and you guys don't be spooked by me, you know. I like to spook of people sometimes, but don't be scared, you know. It's okay. <laughs> my father-in-law passed away on the 25th of April this year. I have a picture of me on my face. I don't need a picture. Was he brown skin or dark skin? Dark skin. And he had a little bit of freckles or little spots on his face? Yes. Yeah. He used to burp a lot before he passed? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> he's still coming through like that and he's laughing and he says, I reach, I did not have any pain. Because he was in a lot of pain before he passed. He, has, he says, I'm not no pain anymore. He says, to tell your, your husband thank you. And I feel like your husband still grieves for him as well. Your father was a very good man, you know, a very nice person. You know, it, and when we cry, we should cry tears of joy. All right? Did he pass from a heart, from heart disease? Because he's showing me his heart and he's showing me kidneys and everything inside. And heart and lungs because he says everything was going. Everything was going. Right? Alright, but he's doing much better. Thank you so much. You need to do better and your husband as well. You know, we have to take care of the physical body. I, I cannot stress that enough. When the souls cross over and they say boom and the heart just stops. It's like a fear. It, it's you know, please learn to take better care. Yes, my dear. My dad passed off five months ago. Yeah. And I wanted to not home with him because I didn't get to talk to him. He what? We did not get to talk to him. Where was he? He in the hospital. He died. Right. I feel like your dad was suffering from dementia. He used to forget sometimes. Do no. you because he's saying that sometimes he would remember stuff and sometimes he would forget. Where is your mother? She's here with me. She's there? Because he worries about your mother and your mother will know sometimes you're talking to she's talking to him and he wouldn't listen. That's true? Yeah. Was he slim? Was he a slim person? No. Because he's coming through a little bit slim with a high cheekbone. High right? cheekbone, but very fat. Right, right, but he doesn't want to remember him fat because okay. he always, people used to make fun of him. Yes, they do. Right, so he says, don't remember me fat, don't remember me fat. He used to talk fast? Yes. Yeah, because he's talking really, really fast and it's like, he's spinning, he's saying, he's like this. He says, He's, hu he's not hungry, he's full. Did you all take your food already? Yes, we did today. Yeah, because he says, I'm full, I'm full. All right? Thank you. You're welcome. And today, is there anything you want to add? Is there anything you want to add? Anybody else? Now you can know My son passed away about two, two and a half years ago. Say that again? My son passed away about two and a half years ago. How old was his son? 18 years. How did he pass? Accident. You guys did not let him go. It's still very difficult. Again, it's not yes. easy to let go of a loved one. But I feel like your son is having a difficult time crossing as well. Only because it's you and your wife, your family, it's really hard. And you have pictures of him in the room. You have a picture of him. Yes. He says he's still in that house. Is something blue in your house? Is it something like a bluish? Something blue, like a baby blue? You can't remember? Okay, because he says, I'm in the house. I'm with you, I'm with you. You all need to do a shrad, right? Talk to Pandit Dave again. Talk to your Pandit. And if you don't let him go, then he's going to become a ghost. 
When Pachipaksha is finished, he's going to stay right there, and that is not good for the soul. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. As again, I know it hurts a lot. It's not easy to lose a loved one, especially a child. But as I told this young lady just now, the child was yours in this life because he had a body. But who gives birth to the soul? Right? It was God. Whether you call him Christ or Krishna. He says, Dad, and forgive me if I cry because I'm picking up everything from the soul. He says, Dad, it was my own fault. It, well, was it some, to some, was he speeding or was it something like that? He was driving, but he wasn't speeding. Okay, but the, the car, the, it ran off the road to slide to the um, sun? Slide. It hit against a truck. Your, your son is saying that he's sorry. I don't want to go into details of it, but your son is saying he's very sorry for what happened. And he should have been paying more attention. At that age, 18 to 20 years old, children like to speed. Right? And I feel like to some degree he was not watching what he was doing. Or your, your wife used to talk to him about this texting and driving. Right? Because he's talking about texting and driving. And again, people listen carefully. You have children. Even grown-ups like to do it, Ebron Adam. I don't Because I tell him drop me back home. Anytime I see him doing this and driving, I say drop me back home. Yes, because <laughs> but you, you have to stop grieving so much. Because that grieving process is keeping that soul at this level, this earthly plane. We do not belong in this earthly plane after we cross, you know. We belong at a higher realm or a lower one under the, under the earth, depending on our good and bad deeds. But you cannot and your wife cannot continue like this. It hurts and it will always hurt. But the best thing to do is to talk to your son. Call his name and say, son, I will love you, but you have to go home. Do not keep him back. Because he says, I want to go home, you know, because I was up here also. He used to talk in like that. And he used to make a lot of jokes too. He used to go for a lot, not so? Yes? And he's saying the same thing. I want to go home. I don't want anything. Daddy, I don't want anything. All right? Okay. So please talk to your wife and, and, and find that. We will we also will keep you in our prayer. Okay. And keep that soul in your prayer. And talk to Pandadeva a bit too, as well. Pandadeva wants to add something. I just wanted to add, you know, from the scriptural standpoint of it, I, I know we will be reading, but, but the Garapuran tells us too about uh, what is called Preta Lok. And in this particular region, it's it's on Pai, it said it coexists with Mithu Lok, with our earth. And there it is that you would have souls who would have died prematurely. You know, um, people uh, even who would have died suddenly even the suicidal cases eh? so i can tell you this case and there it is you uh, these souls it is said you know suffer great misery um they're trapped in that like i have to describe it like prisoners and they remain uh, in a state of confusion sister True. is what it says and they uh you know they still believe that they are alive they still believe that they have the body they are craving um they're hungry Thirst is also part of it, and um, these, and in some cases, maybe like maybe to explain it, like being frustrated. It, these are the souls that are looking for a place to, to get in. They are the ones that can become angry, frustrated, and causing the problems. You know, that we hear about a fact. What, right. So yeah. when this is the case of such souls, like they're looking for like a doorway. You a understand light. the point? Like they're looking to enter. Right, and this is what we call like you know the the boot of pisach, these spirits, these forces, and I wanted to add that, and in such cases too, this is why we have to do the special rites, the amawa, say the new moon, and particularly what I said to the last day of Petrabak, you see that day, a Pit, uh, the Petrabak, that is a powerful day, that is what could help this one because the ordinary offerings. For example, the same thing with suicide. The ordinary offerings maybe might not help those souls because of the timing, you know, of their of their death. Yeah, but the amawasya, especially even the last day, Monday, very powerful. Try and do something, all right, to help souls in that case. Pandaji, to add to that, there is something called untimely death, isn't it? <laughs> right. And again, Pandaji, what you said there makes sense, and I hope he was listening. Um, we don't want to hold the souls back because, you know, there are trees that these souls can ho hold on to, eh? There are souls and sometimes I'm dri we are driving and I'll say, Brother Anil, there's a soul up there. I love to go past by the cremation ground. 
And as he slowed on, we could see them. And he says, no. <laughs> yeah, he speeds up. One day I was my brother, my brother from Trinidad. Um, he, he lives around here. And, um, you know, I, I now came back to Trinidad and there was a funeral passing. And I'm like, I know there's a dead lady. That's a lady. That's a female. He says, how do you know that? You know the man took a back road. You know, the funeral going on. And he's like, just shut your mouth. Don't say nothing. I was like, I think they're coming home with us, you know. <laughs> and uh, he never took me anywhere again after that. <laughs> okay. Yes. I would like to know my dad's story. My dad died when I was five. I got to know him and I would like to know how he's going. Your father was very sick. You don't, your mother is around? Yeah, I think I would have to ask your mom. I know it's really hard because you did not grow up with dad, daddy, but your dad was very sick, right? It was his time to go. It was his time to go. He says he always looked over you though. Even from a higher place, he always looked over you. And you always sent something there. Not so? You always felt like somebody was around. He says, it's, it's okay. He says, I'm always watching over you and your mom. He says he did not want to go early, but his time, his number was called. He used to make jokes as well, not so? He's an old talk a lot. Yeah, because he's saying, my number got called, I had to go. And he used to do this a lot. Shake his shoulders a lot. Yeah, so your dad is doing great. He said he is in really in a higher realm and he's serving from up there. It's a higher place. And there's nothing to worry about, you will be okay. All right. Hi, Sidra Namaste. Just Sidra Namaste. Uh, my dad died on October 2nd, 2011. I think, and that's your mom? Yes. All right, because I had done a reading for your mom a while back. Yes. I'm now meeting you for the first time. Also. Second time. Second time. Right. Okay. And your daughter was already very sick. Yes. Yeah. 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 Y
Well, psychology. Okay, no, that the person here. Oh, oh my goodness, is that a lot of energy here, boy? Oh my gosh. Um, this is a good person. Uh, a person that prays a lot. I don't know who it belongs to, it doesn't matter. Um, sorry? You? It belongs to you? Your daughter? Where is your daughter? All right. A good person, she prays a lot, right? And she she always wants to succeed. Like she have this thing about her. She success is number one. Success is everything. She's going to she's going to reach wherever she you know whatever she puts her mind to. She's going to be okay. She has to watch for neck problems. Sometimes she complains of her neck hurting her. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So she has to watch for that again. This have to do when you when you, <laughs> people on your cell phone tick 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 and you bend up all the time. You're gonna lose your neck. <laughs> You're gonna lose that. <laughs> right, so watch that. If you have to do it, just do it from watch your phone, you know, from that way or iPad or what have you. But a lovely person. She has good health. Sita Ram. Yes, Sita Ram. What, one question I would like to know is uh, we are part and parcel of this super soul. Everybody knows you explain the whole life. Yes. Why are we separated in the first place and we are in the cycle of birth Both and London. life? That's the first question. The next one is. Uh, when you say uh, I am committing suicide, somebody committed suicide, and the soul suffering. Who is that who is committing suicide? And the third question: Is it good to keep the pictures of the loved ones or belonging of the loved ones in the house after the death? Okay, the third question I'll let Pandit Dev answer that. But the first question you want to know: What is this thing with life and death? Why do we have to come back over and over to play this Why role? Why we separated first? In the first place. Why were we separated? Yeah. Right. It's a, uh, every 5,000 years there is a drama or cycle and we have to go through this cycle because we did not learn, right? The, they said that gods cannot take a body. That is true because the gods are very pure. Why do we take a body? Are we that pure? Are we that divine? So what it is is, is burning off karma. We take that a cycle every 5,000 years and they say 84 births, right? So we have to go through 84. I know my number. What number are you? <laughs> right? So we have to go through this. And it's just part of that life's lesson. Until you have to let go. Once you start letting go. Now it's not about letting go alcohol or meat overnight. But it's, it's a slow process. And you say, you know what? I want to change. I want to change for me. I don't want to change for my spouse or my children or my neighbor. i got to change for me. What happens is once you say that thought in your mind, you're going to start elevating. You question everything. Everything you see on the outside, you question it. Once that starts happening, you're going to start going up. And you'll ask yourself, but I feel so different. I feel so light. So but, well, this, the secret is just the meeting with that divinity or becoming that divine being. God is not outside. People are tricked into believing God is outside. God is inside. Not outside. When we run all about looking for God, God is right inside of us. But we have to awaken that God. That's all. And your second question is that it has to do with suicide. You were asking what happens when... Okay, when somebody... I was okay. Let me. So I have to repeat that because I was talking in general. Let's say you lost a loved one, a brother, that committed suicide, right? Once that soul jumps out of the body and realizes its mistake, and you know in Trinidad the suicide rate is pretty high now, right? Because people can't take one stress. Guyana, Japan, there are some countries that it's really, really high, and it has to do with changes in the atmosphere and, and it's a frequency that happens in different countries. In Trinidad, let's just say somebody commits suicide. You know, they vex because they are angry because their spouse was fighting with them. So boom, they go take some tablets or they hang themselves. When the soul, that soul that was in that body realizes that it, oh my God, look what I did. The soul realizes it, it starts screaming. It becomes angry because it tries to jump back into the body. And it doesn't matter what it does, it cannot jump back because the thread that I spoke about snapped. 
it snapped in a terrible way, boom, it comes out. That soul cannot come back into the body. So what happens is that that soul starts grieving. And as I said, if you lose a loved one via suicide or accident, get rid of the body. Don't keep it for a week, two days, max. Because the soul grieves, the soul cries and says, oh my God, look what I did, look what I did. And, as sui as, and for me personally, it's really hard for me to do readings that, with, for families that lost a loved one via suicide because the soul comes through crying. I, rem I remember this lady, the soul came through once, an old lady. Her husband was beating her really, really badly. But she was a divine person. She used to pray every morning. But she couldn't take the beatings anymore. And so she committed suicide. When her daughter called me, I was surprised because I saw the soul with Krishna. And I couldn't understand how could this soul commit suicide and up Krishna. But she ended up with Sri Krishna because of all her good deeds. And the soul came through to me. As you, you understand, I can see thought, right? Say, I ended up with Sri Krishna, but when my time is up up there, I must come back down. Because I have to pay for my doings. Right? Again, one time I'll tell you, one time I read for somebody, I was still living in New York, and I saw her, she, she called about her sister that committed suicide. This, this thing really scared me. The soul that passed, that, you know, via suicide, came through behind a jelly, a sort of thick white jelly. And that scared me. And, I said, my, and the soul was screaming to get out. Was, was in pain. That soul was in pain. Right? And again, suicide victims, they don't find peace right away. They become ghosts. You have to pray for them. You have to say, oh Bhagavan, please forgive them. Whatever they did wrong, please forgive them. Take them into your arms. Forgive them for what they did and, and, and take them and protect them from all negativity. Because there are lots of stuff on the other side that you all don't know about. A lot of angry ghosts, a lot of demons, a lot of spirits. We need to get familiarized with, the, with these things because it exists. It's not just in the scriptures or the Bible. It's real. Right? So that is why I'm saying even the man who asked about his son, do not hold your son back. Because if you do that, then a spirit passes and sees a weak soul on the other side. That's, that demonic force can pull your son, son's soul. That is why I say go into that light. Get to Krishna or Christ. It's very, very important. Ari Pandaji will take the last question from him. You asked about what it was about if the things were the pictures. I know. If it's okay, he was asking basically that. But scripturally, there is no, there is no, uh, you know, it doesn't say that it's bad or anything. I, I, I mean, our pictures, of course, will just be. Uh, we have our pictures, of course, memories um, of the individual. But um, physically, talking about having a picture, you, that's what you're talking about. There's, um, that's not bad, you know, even if someone has passed on. Right? Well, I mean, more so, I mean, what we deal, of course, our prayers, necessary offerings, that is what we are guided by, that we need to, you know, um, to do all necessary rites, to offer the prayers, to help um, the soul. But the picture itself has nothing um, to do with it. Simple as that. Sitaram asked him of my father in law, he passed away the 17th of January 2012. Was he a tall fella? Was he about five seven? Was this man a tall? Yes. Yeah. Do you remember if he had diabetes or he had eye problems? Do you do you know if he had eye problems or diabetes? You all don't know because he's coming through like tired. Like if he was running, was he perspiring a lot before he passed? He wasn't there when he passed. Okay. He passed in the hospital. Right, but before he before he ended up at the hospital, was he? Um, Short breath, like he was tired a lot. Yeah. Right, so he passed from heart. Yes. It was heart, exactly, because he's coming through like tired. He says he ate a lot of fried foods. Yeah. yeah? Right. Because he's coming through saying he loved his food, he loved to eat, he loved to eat. But he's saying I'm not in any pain, but I feel like he's still. He's not letting go, because you, your, your husband and your family, they are not letting go. They still miss him a lot. And when they do pray, he, he says, I'm standing there. Now the soul is talking to me. He says, I'm standing there while they are praying. But like they are praying, but their mind is somewhere else. Sometimes you guys go all over the place, your thoughts go all over. That's okay, you know. Sometimes that happens. It's okay. He says, when you pray for me, just pray. You don't pray to me, you pray for me. Right? 
pray and let go let that energy let lord krishna come and and let talk to lord krishna say baba lord krishna please take take it and call his full name all right and what advice you have for a spiritual gifted person my brother he sees things and hears things i will tell him to practice meditation go directly to meditation either raj yoga or blue star or you know but don't don't take it upon himself it's not something very easy to do because if he's seeing he and hearing things it can be negative things too how is he going to is it negative things yeah. right your brother is a, a little bit like you fair skin yeah. right but he's not here tonight no. right he has to be very careful because these things might try to control him he has to be very careful all right i feel like your brother is trying to become very spiritual or very too quick he cries a lot because it tells him to do things bad but, things right that is not pure good spiritual things that's bad right and it's like negative energies so i would recommend he either go see his pundit talk to the pundit about it or your guru and let the guru help because he's attracting negative entities negative energies so and does he smoke Boy, he's, he's 11 he's 11 because i see like the things that in him to smoke that he ta- ever talk about smoking yeah. he talk about smoking yeah right so these spirits are misguiding him so you all need to keep him in light i would recommend again light a dia in your house with a um, black tea and mustard oil all right a pretty hanuman all right um, we'll take uh, two more questions uh, it's already 9 all right all right people and then the gentleman in the back Uh, I'd like to um, ask uh, there's two questions one um, is a true devotee of Lord Krishna permitted to eat meat does eating of meat retard your, your full potential spiritual um, growth and development and secondly um, if a, when a soul a person you see, has passed on mm-hmm. and the soul has a, is in receipt of a Uh, re- uh, the, the um, opportunity of reincarnation. Mm-hmm. The, the soul, is any t- does any part or element of the soul remain so much so that it comes down in this period or one never sees that, 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 that soul anymore? Okay. Uh, I you see it in another form in a new body, it has taken up. Okay, so let me ask, answer the second question please. How's that? So when a soul takes another body, so let me understand this, my brother. So you're saying once a soul crosses and they take another body, right? If some element of them remain on the other side? Yeah, it comes at the time of the soul. Oh no, they can't because the soul takes another body. Like my grandfather, my gr- Archer, he took another body and he's in Australia. Um, but he cannot come back for um, like this bit trip out because his soul is one. It's not separated. It's not separated in any way. If he took, if he, right? So it's just one soul. But it cannot be half here and half here and half here. It has to be either there or here. Right? So so in that way. Well, only when you cross. When we cross, like I said, I talk about the Akashic record. Only when you cross and you see your real self via the astral body. Only you can see that or people who can see souls and so on. I could see it, but that's none of my business. Right? But when you cross and you see who you were in your past, past person, and who you will become in your future, that person that you will become, it takes a while to get that physical body to play that part. Right? Does that make sense? Now, the first question you asked was about meat. Now, were humans uh, born for meat eating? No, because look at our teeth. We don't have no big animal teeth. You know, look at, I mean, think about it. Our, our intestines were not geared for meat eating. Who made up this thing about we have to eat meat? Right? Who made that up and why? Because the animal, when you consume, okay, think of it this way. You're killing a chicken. To consume that chicken, you're going to consume. What, before you kill that chicken, doesn't the chicken beat up? Or goat or lamb or what have you? Doesn't it fight up for its life, its own life? When the adrenaline, and I'm not a doctor, so Chris, forgive me, but when something like the adrenaline pumps from the heart to the head, it lets off something else. I believe it's called DMT. Chris? Yeah. But the pinya, but it's as a um something like a drug is called DMT and it sends off that energy. So it makes it angry. The animal is angry, fearful, 
sad, everything. You consume that. That is what, that's how you would be. That's how you will feel. So when we humans have fear, you know, and, and you, you, you're driving on the road and nobody's coming speeding, but you're frightened, frightened. Right? It, it's from eating animals. Lord Krishna, they never eat. I don't know where some people messed up with the scriptures in Hindu books and said that um, Lord Krishna, Sri Ram, they used to eat meat. That is not true. We would never get for eating meat. I've been a vegetarian all my life to say really. And guess what? I'm still living. You know, I'm okay. So doctors again, I mean no offense to Chris, but <laughs> made up the story that uh, we have to eat meat in order to survive. <laughs> Dr. Gyan, I mean. <laughs> what did the guy, let me ask, ask the guy though. No. Yeah, brother, come. The guy, let, let me hear you. Does the astral body disintegrate? One, and if it does when? How long it does it take? And two, how will you describe this to us uh, academic inquirer? Oh, beautiful question. Does the astral body disintegrate? It disintegrates to what? When it's the body that disintegrates. When the soul leaves the body, and from the astral, from the thread, it comes out of the body, it goes in one piece. It does not go piece here and there and everywhere, like the soul, like we were talking about. It stays on one place. One. Do you understand, brother? It stays one, it, it either goes up, it goes side, it goes where it has to go, but it remains as one. Because every single thing is stored in that astral body. Every single thing. And the second question you ask is like, how do you explain? Academic inquirer. Okay. How does this, okay, for academic inquirer, let's say somebody who is a highly intelligent, they don't believe in the soul, right? How do you say that? Oh, from a scientific level, and we have Dr. Chris Gian with us, one of our members, will say that, you know, how do you explain that? Well, again, it comes from where the, that soul was leaving the body. What happens, and Dr. Chris, I'll ask you to come and join me. Come. What happens when that body, when that soul is leaving the body? That soul is leaving the body, but yet the soul is, the, the body is there crying out for its loved one. So Dr. Gian, ex oh. No, I'm not. Go ahead. From a physical point, uh -huh. I'm looking from a physical eye, yeah. How you describe that on a blackboard? Oh, that's very difficult to describe because guess what? You have to see it with the, like again, you have to have the third eye open. It's not easy something for you to describe unless you get a dream about how it happens or you get a vision of how it happens. Okay, so tell you, you, you see these souls, right? Yeah. How are you going to describe it to me? Huh? How do I describe it? Okay. Okay, very easy. I see this soul, like this lady, her son came through. Just as how he was when he was alive, he came true, right? Because that is what you remember them as before they left this body. Yes, the physical. Like the, uh, the, man, the lady who could ask about her, her, her father-in-law, and the father-in-law was at the hospital, and I, saw, and I said to her, he was glowing, he was perspiring. They come true exactly like what they left. In order to prove, in order to prove that it is them, and in order for you to know, it's that that soul wants you to confirmation. Okay, but this is a bad extension of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Do we, do you see the soul in isolation from the body? Yeah, because it has no body. But when you ask that question, isolation, it does not have a physical body anymore, but it remembers that physical body it once had. Does that make sense? So it comes true like that for me. It comes true like the physical body it once had for me to, for you to confirm that this is who it is. It can't come true like somebody you don't know, right? It has to come true like how you remember it, the good and the bad. Whatever the soul enjoyed, the soul enjoyed curry mango, like in this case with this lady, right? Your father, you know, like plenty curry mango, no? So, right, he's still here. The soul is still here. Her son is still here. The souls, they invite themselves. They know their loved ones were coming. So I told Brother Anna before we got here, I said it might have 40 people, but guess what? It's going to have 200 souls waiting. And the souls that will come true, guess what? They will look identical to when they left this physical body. Well, it 
is energy. Everything is energy in motion. What I am doing is energy in motion. I'm not doing anything. You see me doing anything? No, I'm not doing anything. It's energy that I'm using to converse with these souls. No, I'm not questioning you. What are you doing? Okay. I'm, what I'm, I'm saying is describing the soul in isolation, not with the body. Okay. So the soul has left, left the body. Okay. Why you describe that soul that has left the body? I mean, Without a body, right. But again, it's an energy base. So once it had an energy when it was alive, it remembers the last body it carried and that is what will go with it. It's everything, you know, even when you take out food. If somebody asks me, well, they go to the pundit and the pundit say, take out all these food. So also like plenty curry mango. Baby's brother, baby background brother passed a, couple, a year ago. I said, baby, before she did her one year, I said, take out, make sure you cook that mango good, eh? And when I come, I have to taste it because if it's ain't good, the soul wouldn't enjoy it. So souls will enjoy these foods what they enjoyed once on this planet. Right? As I said before on Pandan Panda, they would attest, do not take out cigarette, rum, all those things. If the soul like those things, do not take it out. So the soul comes back with all its desires, all the things that it loved. Like the man who died, the boy who died in car accident, he loved to drive. You know, he loved to play music. It will come back showing me that he loved music. Or her son loved to play the drums. It, the soul came true because it remembers that. Uh, Pondi, Dave, feel free to jump in at any time, but as I understand it, what you're referring to is the Jivatma, correct? And there's the, the Paramatma, which is the super soul, which is considered as the Godhead in Hare Krishna tombs. Now, according to Guru Puran, if I'm not mistaken, when the, the soul leaves the body, it's about the size of the thumb, right? And it would, can be represented if you were to describe it. Nobody here, not, sorry, no offense is there. Nobody here can, can, with our apparatus, human apparatus and senses, fully describe any attribute of the Brahman. Because that is what the soul is, a part of the Brahman. That is what each and everybody here is. But if, uh, as far as we know, as far as what the, the, the Rishis and Swamis are, have handed down, is that if there were to be a form of this Jivatma, it would be as though it were light. Now, uh, the, the, the thing about the soul coming down and, and having a form, in order to, as a medium to express itself in the time of Peter Baksha or otherwise, or to, to the, those such gifted, right, sister, it will need to find a form that is recognizable, that bears the attributes of the previous incarnation to which it is currently linked to, in, in that form of communication, but but that that form that it takes is not is not even it. It's just a form. It's it's a form. It's a shape shifter, in 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 essence, because you don't expect a soul that once looked like a pure human being that ended up being a praetor or hungry ghost to look like a person that it once was. It would morph into a demon. So it, it has the ability to shape shift in that regard. Very good. Thank you. Any more questions before we take that? I have one. <laughs> this question is for Pandit Dev. Pandit Ji, our scriptures declare that out of the four ages, Satyug, Treta, Dwapar, and Kaliyug, in this age, Kaliyug is the age where man can achieve moksha easily. It is said in, I believe it is Aranyaka, Jakarana, Mukuta, Mukha, Ava, if even the vilest singer, or a depraved soul, if the name of Bhagwan Ram is upon his or her lips at that time of death, that person enjoys moksha. My question is, if someone lived a vile life throughout his lifetime, and by Bhagwan's grace he is able to say the name Ram before he dies, is his soul going to achieve moksha, liberation, or will that soul, Sister Devi, have to go through the karma of the 
bad deeds he would have done throughout his life? Great question. First of all, let me, let me explain to our scriptures, and I didn't. I, I can add. It can be a little more technical if I add to this because there are different regions of heaven, and there are also many hells. So, there is the journey. There is evolution, and there is there are the stages. Our Guru Puran will tell us that the soul goes through its journey through the various cities for the one lunar year. Everyone has to go through it. So Guru Puran will tell us that the journey is a very smooth, pleasant one for the virtuous, for the one who has practiced uh, good karma. Whereas for those who have done the wrong, they also would reap you know, the fruit of, of that particular karma. Let me also point out to you, again for further information generally, do you know even though, even in the Pitralok region, according to Garu Purana tells us as well, that yes, it, it's one of the plain, Pitralok is also called Chandralok, where the moon is the presiding deity. And there it is, even souls that go there would enjoy, I have to put it like, like paradise, they enjoy like heavenly bliss for some time. And after that, because of the karma, let's say because of the bad karma, so they will get good for the, they will of course get that reward for the good that they have done. But for the bad, they also, so they may be subject to rebirth. So they will have, that is where now reincarnation, rebirth comes in. And so you see that there is a, a you know, they drop back. Because the highest, the, of course, the goal is to gain liberation, mukti. So there are different levels. Um, you know, different levels of, of heaven, um, different regions where different souls, like the rishis would have a region, they go, so as you mentioned, you're talking about the person who have done um, wrong. Uh, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint the exact name. I wouldn't know. I'm not the ultimate judge. I can't say. But, you know, there is a room, like maybe like in class, you have the A class, the B class, the C class or so. So that person still, our scriptures tell that there is hope, there is redemption in our scriptures, and there is a place for them. Everyone has a place. So they will get the good uh, for chanting the name of the Lord. So still at least taking that name, they will get the reward. And maybe they'll be reborn. And maybe by virtue of that, who knows? They might be blessed and lucky to be reborn in a home, a very religious home, where they will, you know, grow up in puja. Lucky if they may be born as a Baba or Brahma or someone like that. They will get a chance, you know. I'm sure that definitely they will get the reward of, of, of that. Okay? But he was old. He was 84, around 80s. Because he's coming through as old and he was really tired a lot. He was very sickly. Right. So he's coming through bend. He used to bend and walk. Right. So you see again to the gentleman who was asking the question, they come through as what you remember them as. But he's doing wonderful. He says to tell you he got everything. Does that make sense? You all took out food? Right, but he says he got everything. All the prayers that you all did for him, he got everything. All the prayers, everything. Right? So good. I know somebody just let's take a walk and Wow. Your mom was very sick, but you wouldn't remember that, right? And she had a lot of diabetes or something because she's coming. Did you, do, do you know anything? She had blood pressure because she suffered from, was suffering from diabetes and stuff. Because she's coming through with eye problems. And again, she's looking over you, just like how this, this girl's father. So she's looking over you and waving. And for Pitri Puck, she's around. And when Pitri Puck is done, she has to go back home. Because she was a very good soul. Very, very religious soul. So you see, after Petri Paksh is over on Monday night, right, Pandaji? Monday night, the souls have to go all the way back up. None of them stays unless they are um, ghosts, they become ghosts and so on, and that's for another time. But your mother is doing wonderful. All right? Yes, dear? Sit around. Your dad passed a, a, a while back? Yeah, because he's coming through a, a long time back. And he, was, he used to talk fast, do you remember? He used to talk fast? 
because he's the, he can't. He has so much to say. Again, you see, the souls came with you all. Don't carry them back home when you going. <laughs> all right, but he's doing well. And um, your grandmother and grandfather, do you, your mother-in-law. Okay, but your mother-in-law was a short lady. Do you remember her? She was a short lady. She used to talk a lot, and she had a tooth problem. She had problems with her mouth teeth. Yeah, because she's coming through saying, oh, no, 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 like talking, talking, but she had problems with her mouth. They are together. And they said they have they crossed. You know, Pandaji could attest to this about the, um, the tree, the um, cotton, silk cotton tree. After you cross, there's a silk cotton tree. They are saying that they crossed and they are by the silk cotton tree. Does that make sense, Pandaji? Right? But Pandaji will delve more into that on his program on 101.1 FM. Um, every morning from Monday to Friday from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, time, whoa, it's 20 after 9. And I would like the band to play to send off so and good vibration, good energy. And did you all enjoy this type of program? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. But thank you to everybody who made it possible, not just me. And Dr. Chris Gann, he works at Sunny Grand Hospital if you need a favor. Um. <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you guys for coming. Really appreciate it. Get home safe. And um, Pandadev, I would like for you to close with a prayer, please. Pandaji. Ek baar Sri Krishna Chandra Bhagwan ki jai. So my dear bhaktas, let us all put our hands together. Let us close our eyes as we meditate upon that beloved form of Bhagwan Sri Krishna. As we ask his blessings. We pray and of course we thank Lord, the Lord for life. We thank God for granting us the opportunity to be here. We pray for Bhagwan to return us safely to our respective abodes and more so for his choice blessings upon our pitras, our loved ones, all those great souls. May Lord Krishna be pleased with our devotion, with our prayers, with our energies here tonight. Let us all pray. Hari Namo Vigandrupaya Paramananda Rupine Krishnaya Gopinathaya Govindaya Namo Namam Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsachanur Marganam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Bande Jagat Guru And we pray for the upliftment upon all souls For those who have not found that peace For those who are lost, wandering, suffering in whatever form O Lord Krishna May you uplift, may you bless and take care of those souls. Anadi nidanu deva shanka chakra gadhatara Akshaya pundari kaksha Pretor pitra moksha pradobhava Narayana sura srishta lakshmi kanta janardana Anina tarpani nartha Pretor pitra moksha pradobhava Everybody collectively Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva, peace to all souls. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva, happiness to all the souls. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva, O Lord, remove all sufferings, grant them upliftment together, everybody. Twameva matas chapita twameva Twameva pandhus chasaka twameva Twameva vidyadra vinam twameva Twameva sarvam mama deva deva Om shanti 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 Hari Peace to the body, peace to the mind, and peace to the soul. Peace to every one of you. Brindaban Bihari Raliki. Everybody, Ram Nam. Satya Hai. Sabkwe Gat Hai. Sarva Pitri Kalyana Mastu. May the blessing of the Pitras be with us all. Jai Shri Ram. Before the band starts, I would like to thank uh, all members of the Chariot Foundation for making this possible. Um, this is quite an event. A lot of planning, you know, to, to conduct a satsang goes into this. And we would like to thank all the members. We would like to thank you all for coming out. I know many of you may have come from different uh, directions and we wish you all a safe, safe journey home. We also give out a card with contact numbers 
Uh, if you guys want to get a private appointment, you can call or text or WhatsApp or whatever the case may be, whisper, um, try and get through to us and we'll set up appointments to speak to Sister Dave, you'll meet her in person. Again, you know, it's really good to see a good turnout like this. And we will announce via Facebook, we are very active on social media. It's not possible for us to take all the calls, all right? Because we do work during the day, we have responsibilities. So if you don't get through to us, send a text message, leave a voicemail, find out how to get on, get on to us on Facebook, or Red Chariot Foundation page, send us a message, and we will respond. All right, so thanks again for being here. We would like to thank you, Ban Samadhi. Uh, it was Michael birthday this week, so he did this for his birthday. So could we give Michael uh, a round of applause for his birthday? And uh, thanks to the band for coming out from Marathon. Right, thanks to Mr. Hamid, the video buffer, and Ranjan Sound System. Uh, without you guys doing this, it wouldn't be possible. Many thanks to Tarum. Okay. 